Welcome in. It is so great to see you on this week's weather hangout and we've got really quite the squad for you on this W211 weather hangout. If you're watching us on YouTube or on W211 plus, we appreciate you coming back each and every week and we hope to keep you informed about various topics that are ongoing across the region. And if you're new to this, we've got meteorologist Matt Willoughby here, meteorologist Diane Phillips, meteorologist John Birchfield, and I'll round this out. I'm chief meteorologist Chris Vickers and we are officially guys into the summer season. Yeah. We're thinking, what, pool weather? We have a swimming pool in the yeah. studio. Who's who's the first one to take a dive? I'll take a dive in. <laughs> I need it to be a little bit warmer. You guys are just going. The 60s I know. this week were a little bit chilly yeah. for me. It didn't quite really feel like summer, did yeah. it? A it little bit like of a pause. April. Yeah, but we finally got some needed rainfall. I'm sure that was great news for area farmers, gardeners, all those who wanted to green things up a little bit. Yeah, I'll Do take some cold weather if it means getting some rain. Do you hear the sound of that? <laughs> that, that's the farm fields rejoicing in the rain and it, it's the soybeans and, and the corn crops that are saying, yes, finally we got that drink mm -hmm. of rain. One of the longest streaks that we've actually ever seen in the spring season. And John, you're going to be talking a little climatology as well uh, coming up uh, in your uh, Climate Friday as well. Yeah, after three weeks without any rain, we're finally starting to make up ground. But of course, it's going to take a little bit more to make up that rainfall deficit. So we'll have more coming up in the Climate Friday newsletter. And today on the Weather Hangout, Diane, uh, what's up with the Air, turning a little smoky again this week. Oh, yes, this no. is, I know, I, a lot of people are going <laughs> to go, oh no, but we are once again going to be talking about wildfire smoke moving into the area and even talking about how this is going to be a problem for much of the summer. So something to keep an eye on, I'll have more on that. So both of you grew up in this area, right? So this is a big farming area, lots of farm fields, corn and, and corn and soybeans. Have you ever heard, and I know the answer to this, knee high by the 4th of July as far as the corn? Yeah. Yeah. Well, knee high is a little different for Matt versus Diane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's well, easy this year. Yes, that'd be some healthy corn, man. <laughs> Just hang on a minute because you're going to see uh, meteorologist Matt Willoughby yes. out in the cornfields. Matt, you actually did a little investigation into uh, this myth, so to speak, or what it actually means for the corn crop. Yeah, exactly. I, I kind of dug into what that, what exactly that means, and also um, if with the drought and, of course, the wildfire has has that had any impacts, and how they've kind of gotten creative with growing. So it may be ill. <laughs> just, I'm just gauging it for you. So. Well, we're so glad to have everybody along for this uh, week's WT11 weather hangout. Now, uh, outside of our area, there's really been some captivating video that's been going on. Uh, Diane, why don't you take us through this one here? We've had an eruption of another volcano. Yeah, so there's just a lot of heat going on across the globe. This is the Kilauea volcano on Hawaii's big island, though. It's been remaining active since about Sunday, and it did erupt on Wednesday morning with lava flows confined to the surrounding crater floor. According to the video provided by the United States Geological Survey, you're going to see that, of course, it's still fairly active. We mm. have that active lava there. Um, of course, Kilauea was going uh, about a year ago uh, that we were talking about this right. making headlines. So once again, back at it, of course, something to always keep an eye on volcanoes. They don't have a season, they go on their own time. And a lot of scientists out there are actively observing that. They estimate that uh, that eruption right now, that lava or that magma coming out of that chamber is over 1,100 degrees Celsius. Ooh. That is about 2,100 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot. All right, next up, another volcanic eruption. Matt, what's going on here? This yeah. one across the globe. Yeah, across the globe. Maybe want to turn the lights off to see this one. This is the uh, Philippines' most active volcano, and it was uh, spewing lava down uh, slopes just yesterday as the police and army uh, set up checkpoints to prevent villagers from entering the danger zone. Wow, and stunning video right there. Too close to touch. Yes. No thank you for me. Uh, John, wildfires have been big issue uh, up in Canada and actually actively impacting our area. Yeah, Take a look at this video. That's been a big story so far this June and footage posted to Facebook by the British Columbia Wildfire Service that shows an intense and volatile blaze moving across the landscape under low to moderate winds. Wow doesn't even look real and it's amazing that that smoke has drifted all the way here to northwest Ohio and southeast Michigan and likely going to continue to impact our weather story this summer. Well, John, look at how remote that area is as well. Yeah. And a lot of the experts up there are saying that a lot of these fires, uh, they're really just burning uncontrolled because they don't have access to uh, actively fight these fires. So this could be an issue much of the summer. If For the sure. winds are blowing in a certain direction, we may be getting wildfire smoke. Yeah, and the weather ingredients have just been primed for this. Every single Canadian province is under drought conditions, and there's been a significant rainfall deficit. And that, of course, allows them to grow, proliferate, and spread and become worse. And a very warm spring they've had up there as well. Certainly. 
certainly the warmth and the drought combined. Well, we are just getting rolling with this week's weather hangout. We appreciate you being with us. So we've got the team that's gathered here to keep you entertained and of course educated with what's happening in our weather world. Stick around. We're coming back with a little more about the wildfire smoke mm -hmm. with Diane yep. Phillips and also can you smell it? Do you think you can smell rain? I think I can. You yeah, guys? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll find out the science behind the smell of rain coming up right after this. Over 2 million acres burning there from the Quebec wildfires. Of course, we're keeping an eye to those as they were playing with our forecast last week. And just a heads up here, we are still going to be seeing smoky conditions in Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan before this week is out. So we're not seeing a long break, but there's a lot of things to keep in mind when we look at this forecast. First off, let's see when we are going to have that smoke coming in. Currently, we've been finding that it's been fairly dense and at its thickest point into Wisconsin, Minnesota, kind of right there along the northern portion of the country, just kind of on the other side of Lake Michigan. You can even see the UP also feeling a little bit of that. Well, not feeling, but seeing some of that haze in their skies. But this is going to continue to sink down into Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan as we go into Thursday. Friday, though, I did want to jump ahead because we do see some relief, but there's a lot of components when we are talking about the wildfire smoke that are going to come into play as far as what it's going to be like for us and when we do see that relief. Now let's kind of talk about the explanation. Of course, off towards our north and east, we do have that wildfire smoke. But yesterday we picked up some rain. Even Sunday we saw some rain and that's because of this big red L. Low pressure can rotate counterclockwise and because of that it's able to pull some of that smoke from those wildfires and it's going to send that just towards our west because the center of that storm was located right over Michigan. So of course that's going to keep it for the west. But as the rest of this week goes on that big red L just continues to drive further east and that means eventually we are going to be on the western side and though we're done with the rain, that means that the smoke that is going to start to move in for us. So even as we go through the later half of our Wednesday, but also into Thursday, you may notice, oh, the haze is back. So those skies, it'll kind of have that filter overhead. And as far as air quality, of course, we'll be keeping an eye to it as we are going to kind of be right around that middle range between that lighter smoke, even getting closer to some of those heavier sm and smoky conditions. So something to keep an eye to. And of course, there's a lot of drivers in this forecast as far as how it can come to play. But another thing to keep in mind is how about some of that relief? So hopefully we don't have a look like this, though it has been pretty hazy on a lot of our camps, our downtown sky camp. I keep looking to see how far I can get a glimpse of the mighty Maumee River further south with the haze overhead. So either way, you have this hazy setup. But the good news is for us is though we do have the smoke coming in, we have rain on the way in the forecast. The later half of Thursday, that rainfall is going to come in, and the way that that works is that rain falls. It's able to pick up the particles, the dust, the dirt, the smoke. It's able to pick up some of those ingredients in the air and kind of keep things a little bit cleaner, purify that air for us, and that can bring us then some relief. So though we do have hazy conditions, thankfully this time we see some quick relief with that rain and also conditions becoming better come Friday. And some of the drivers, though, a low pressure system, that big red L, that's going to determine our wind direction. It's also going to be bringing us rain. So those are what we're going to be watching here through the summer season to see, well, where is that smoke going to go? Because like Chris had mentioned, those are rural areas where that wildfire is continuing to burn, and it's just hard to get there to fight those fires. So we will be working with this all summer long, keeping an eye to that. Another thing is, is that, of course, rainfall is going to determine if we can get that air cleaned out, but also that wind direction. For 
for us, if you have that northeast wind that's really been troublesome for us, it's also been fairly dominant lately. And that's why we've been seeing a lot of haze and some of that wildfire smoke here in northwest Ohio and southeast Michigan. Of course, we'll continue to update and keep an eye on those fires. And also as far as air quality index, we'll always have those updates on the WTO Well 11 weather app. Thankfully, though, the rain does help us in this situation. And I know on Sunday, folks are saying, oh, I forgot the smell of rain. Yes, if your nose knows what's going on, well, then you're going to want to know the science behind it. Let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Chris Vickers. Chris, there's a lot that kind of goes into the smell of rain, and I know a lot of people like it, especially after all the dry weather. Right, we got to clear the air on this, right, Diane? Uh, question for you, too. Were you actually able to smell any of that wildfire smoke last week? Because a lot of it's aloft in the atmosphere, but occasionally it can be down closer to the surface. Yeah, so at times I was out and I wasn't sure if it was just mentally smelling it. There's definitely that difference there. And of course, keeping an eye on what levels that smoke is uh, in, definitely going to be watching that for air quality as well. Right, yeah, we of course want to stay far away from that, but Diane, I agree, I can actually smell when rain is approaching. And uh, especially after the, what, three weeks of dry weather, this is a welcome smell. Yes, a lot of people will probably, you know, maybe unplug the air freshener that they've been using of fresh rain and then just have the real one when it finally is uh, here and in full blast. I think we're thinking up a new idea here. Let's keep it between you and I right now, right? <laughs> we'll, we'll have that we'll have that uh, invention released uh, perhaps in the coming years. Yeah, we'll work on that. All right, so let's get be, uh, behind the science of this one. Can we actually smell when rain is coming? And if you're outdoors through the course of Sunday when we really were in that midst of that historic dry spe uh, spell of weather, we had rain that actually came into the area and that smell of rain was actually a true scent that many of us may have picked up on. Now science really tries to dig deep into this one. We're not entirely sure the exact cause of why you can smell rain, but we've got at least a few ideas behind why this may in fact be occurring. So let's start with scenario number one within our soil. There's billions and billions of different types of bacteria that actually actively live within our soil. These produce certain types of spores that are naturally and organic occurring within our soil. Now, as we dry out, those spores can become more numerous through the topsoil of uh, our ground. When that rain actually comes down and those spores actively get wet, those raindrops actually help to release some of the Earth's smelling chemicals into the air we can actually smell that or perceive it with our nose. So that's idea number one with this one. Idea number two is that plants actually secrete oils during dry periods. And we went about three straight weeks without any rain across the area. So take, for example, our corn crops or our soybeans that are actively growing in the field. Those oils can accumulate in the ground around those plants. Now, rain causes those compounds then to be released as those oils become wet in a smell that actually has a name for it called petrichor. If you ever heard that one before, it could be maybe the name of our new flavor or new smell. Petrichor is actually that scent that rain produces as it interacts with the oils from some of that organic material. So that's another option or another reason behind why we could actually smell rain. Now, there is a third explanation, and this occurs more so when thunderstorms develop in an abnormally dry period. Lightning can actually split oxygen, oxygen molecules into their individual atoms. So if we take this from a basic chemistry level, when we have an oxygen atom that gets split, that atom then can combine with another uh, um, uh, molecule of oxygen, creating O3, which is ozone. Ozone, O3, actually has a distinct smell to it as well. So it's very possible that lightning can split two atoms or an atom of uh, two atoms of oxygen, creating a new organic compound, O3, which is ozone, and that is potentially a scent that we can pick up with our nose. So there's many explanations of why you may have smelled rain or rain coming and a little science behind what we expect or why that may be occurring. Always love to keep you informed with the science here on the WT11 Weather Hand. Out. Stay tuned. We've got more coming up right after this quick fact.
Well, the growing season is in full swing and the food we all love the most at barbecues may be at stake this summer. With the lack of rain and wildfire smoke, I'll be breaking down how corn is impacted and if we'll see knee high, at least corn knee high by 4th of July. Check it out. The dry and hazy weather throughout Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan lately has left farmers with no choice but to come up with smarter ways to keep the growing season on track. For the Stevens Farm in McClova Township, it has been difficult. The drought has really impacted our growing season. We've spent a lot of time and energy on watering everything. So the rains that came helped some. We definitely need more. We could take a lot more. Uh, but it's affecting everybody's growing season this year. With the lack of rain, they've had to get creative. We have a water wheel here that we move around to the different areas, plus one water gun but it doesn't cover the whole farm at one time. So it's just a lot of moving it and each day a different part of the farm gets some water and then the next day we move it to another part. With rain, it gets it all at once and it's no work involved for us. But how much rain will actually help? If we get another half inch, that would be pretty much perfect for us if we get that this week. But just about everything we raise, an inch a week is perfect if we could get that. Never happens that way. Um, any more than two inches a week, then we're looking into water problems. The wildfire smoke from Canada last week has also added to the list of issues for these farmers. Having the smoke cover overhead for, it was a couple of days and we got one clear day and then came back again. It, it slowed down the ripening process on the strawberries and it slows down the growing process on the corn. So will the famous saying come true this year? This is the corn that has the saying, knee high by 4th of July, but that's also an antiquated saying. It's a lot more productive now, it grows faster, we've got different fertilizers, it's a whole different growing practice than there used to be. So by 4th of July, we definitely want to see it at least waist high, not knee high. Reporting in Monclova Township, I'm meteorologist Matt Willoughby for WTO 11. Right, who's got a favorite way to eat corn, corn on the cob? Any way you prepare it differently or just butter it up? <laughs> Grilled corn on the cob really adds another level. There when you go. get that little char on it too, maybe sprint some lime juice on there. I don't know if you've ever tried that. Lime juice and salt. Ooh, I'm going to have to try that. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to go over to John's for a bite. <laughs> it sounds like. I've never yeah. heard this, but yeah. i got to try it. No, it's perfect for the summer and a nice, nice side dish to accompany that cookout. And no butter? Well, you can, or okay. I usually, I usually butter it up completely, honestly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I feel like I just like mind blown for the summer. I got to try that. Yeah. How about you, Diane? Anyway. Butter. All right. There we That's go. the only That's way. The way. <laughs> I thought. <know. laughs> and of course, when time allows, uh, pop some popcorn for a good movie oh, or so. Oh yeah. But uh, love the long summer days. And really, we're actually entering into the uh, full summer season where we're at, uh, you're very close to the longest daylight hours that we're going to experience mm -hmm. over the course of the calendar year. Uh, that actually occurs on the summer solstice this year, which is going to be early next week. And then I don't want to be the Debbie Downer here, but days start to get a little bit shorter. <laughs> oh man. Very, very slow. I guess we just got to enjoy those not being sunsets while you're here. Yeah, right? but the weather right. still gets hotter because July actually is statistically the hottest month of the year. So the days get a little shorter, but we get that heat and humidity building too. So you're telling me lots of summer weather left. Lots of summer left, yeah. We are very early in the summer season. And of course, we aim to keep you informed and educated all summer long with our weekly W211 weather hangout. And if you're watching us on YouTube, why don't you go ahead and give us a comment or perhaps share it with those that may uh, enjoy watching this as well. Or on W2L11 Plus, that is a great way that we can reach you and have you be informed. We appreciate you hanging out with us on this week's weather hangout, and you'll be able to see new episodes every Wednesday through the course of the summer season. Take care. Have a great one.
Thank you.